All right, so got the input, uh, the output shaft snap ring put back in place. Um, it was kind of a pain getting it in there. Um, they're just a, they're just a funky thing. They're high tension. They're hard to get your snap ring pliers on. They, um, they're in a tight spot inside that front planet to try and get it in, but we finally got it. Um, so that's good. Um, so now we really don't have a whole lot left to do um, as far as assembly. So we're up to the sun shell on the front planet. So now all we really have to do, um, set our sun gear over here. We are ready to mate our, well, not just yet. We have to do the stator shaft ceiling rings. Um, the stator shaft rings are the four, yeah, I gave it the old one too. <laughs> Uh, finally got it Anthony it was a it was a pain I actually did have to walk it on with uh, screwdrivers um, like I do sometimes it was just uh, just wanted to be a pain I guess um, okay so input shaft seal rings these are ready to come off um, I stab them right through the middle with a uh, razor blade and then they they peel off real easy like that once they're cut and uh, a, lot of, a lot of guys try and reuse these things because they are, they're kind of actually, I mean, I ain't going to lie, they're a pain to put on because they're solid rings, so you have to resize them to get, um, to get it down over the shaft and then get them settled into their, their ceiling rings. Ceiling ring grooves, I guess I should say. Um, yeah, I know Turbo 400 stuff is rough sometimes. Um, so my solution to these are these different kind of rings. So they've got these right here, which are the factory kind. They're just a solid Teflon ring, and you basically have to work them in your fingers and get them spread out and then you run it down over the input shaft and down in the groove and then you have to resize it down um, that's all good I have I have a way to do that but I have since discovered these um, this is an area that's kinda controversial to some guys but it's not what you think um, so they have on the early 700R4's they use scarf cut which a scarf cut seal is it's got a slash cut through it it's like this this is a scarf cut seal so it's got both ends cut on a bevel and they go together like this um, these are not really good for this location because they leak at the scarf cut because as you see they just as I'm holding it the, the ends don't meet um, that's okay on the back of the pump where the reverse input drum goes but for this location here, that's not good. So what I use, these are so easy to install, but they cost like twice as much. But what's 50 cents versus a dollar anyways? It'll save you 30 minutes of time. These are, they call them L-cut or, um, what is it? L-cut or lathe cut. I can't remember what they call them, but they, they, the ends lock. So they're like a slash cut. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on it. The ends are shaped like a letter L, and when you put them together, they lock. So there's no real leakage point to them uh, if you install them correctly. So all you gotta do, literally, this is how fast you can put all four of them on. So I'm gonna put a little bit of lube on this input shaft so that the ends will stick. There goes the first one. First one's on. Second one is close. Let's see. Second one. Second one's on. Okay. Third one is on. Fourth one is on as well. So these are all good. Now, that's awesome, but which you have to watch out for just like the regular ones they will still get snagged on the inside of the pump bushing when you put them down in there 
So you still have to kind of massage these in and make sure the ends where the L cut part is, where the where they join together, are not hanging out. Um, they're not sticking out. They're not, you know, that's that's the whole purpose that I use the green trans gel right there to make sure they're it's extra sticky. It'll hold the ends together. So that's ready. We're ready to take our brand new shiny reverse input drum and put it on the top. So what we need to do to do that, we need to put the selective thrust washer, which this one is a number 68. This is what you would switch out to change the end play in this unit. Same thing for 700 R4. So this goes down first. It's not directional. You can put the, the size number up, size number down, doesn't really matter. All right, the new bearing, put some transmission fluid on the bearing. The bearing goes in there, in the little crater it's got for it. And then you can mate your reverse input drum to the input drum. Now, what you're gonna do, you're gonna spin it. Spin it, spin it, spin it, and you'll you'll see it drop down as each clutch engages into the top of the input drum. You'll know when you've gone far enough because you'll see the top, you'll see the bearing spinning, which means the weight of the input drum is on that top bearing. So basically, just kind of act like you got a big steel pottery wheel or something like that, and just start spinning it around, and it'll drop all the way down. And so it's, that's all there is to it. Now, that's ready to go. So what I like to do now is put some high tack green on the front sun gear so that it will stay in there, stay in the sprag rather, um, when I turn this thing sideways. So I usually build these things hanging up sometimes or either turned upside down sitting on like a bucket or something um, so that you know I don't have to fight the weight of the drum sideways and so forth. Um, see my sun gear came out of it. Let's see. Yeah. Just go ahead and put the sun gear in the front planet and do it that way. Alright. Then we're gonna lift it. And engage it in. Now you have to keep upward pressure on the reverse input drum because it's gonna to wanna to fall off of the input drum. The clutches are wanting to come out as you're pushing in on this. So what you're doing while you're spinning this whole thing together is you're making all the clutches in the input drum, rather just the three fours rather, onto the front planet carrier. So that's kind of the downside to using more clutches rather, you know, the factory is six. If you use seven or eight, you got that's that many more that you have to engage. It's going, it's just you gotta fight with it. Sometimes I like to get my big pair of vice grips. This is a cool trick. The vice grip teeth actually line up on a 30 spline input shaft. In other words, they don't smash the splines, they actually go in it. Uh, to answer your question, uh, Anthony, about the sun gear, it's four pinion planets in this one, 4L65 and so forth bigger stuff has more planets but you got four planets hence the solar system reference 
and then the sun gear goes in the middle. The sun gear spins the planets backwards against the outer ring, which spins the opposite way. So it's that's why they call it a planetary gear set. You've got the sun gear in the middle, which the sun is, you know, center of the solar system. That kind of whole nomenclature is what brings it all together. So, like I said, the vice grip teeth will go straight in the input shaft. They won't mar the teeth. And you can use it as a handle to kind of wiggle it back and forth and get everything situated in there. why I usually turn them up on the side or up on end because you're fighting this drum wanting to come out and a bunch of other stuff but just so you guys can see what I'm doing I'm gonna try and work with it this way the best I can I actually think we uh our input drum is mated correctly. I think it's the reverse input drum has come out of uh, position. Yep, there we go. Perfect. So everything's in it. As you can see, you got the reverse input drum is where it should be. Um, so at this point, we are pretty much down to the pump. Um, and the valve body, which uh, kind of out of time right now. I've got some things to take care of here today, um, but later on this evening I'll be back. We'll cover uh, the pump cleaning, which I cleaned the pump a little bit, but um, we need to take the valves out of it, the boost valve, the converter valve, um, converter shift valve for the lockup. Um, we'll cover that. We'll go through uh, the Transgo HD2 kit install and um, we'll cover the Corvette servo and the accumulators and stuff like that but as far as the gear train we are golden from here on out um, everything's in uh, except the band which we can't put the band in just yet because uh, kind of got a I usually do that with the servo um, to kind of do it all together to get the band clearance set up straight the way it should be um, but uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we got here, um, all we got left in the box, which this doesn't really count, this is the Transaver. Uh, Anthony, I don't know if you were on the last video early enough, but this is one size smaller than the one that I showed you. This is like two inches smaller, and I think it would be easier for Ricky to fit this in the F-body. Um, he might have to turn it 90 degrees or whatever but I think two inches will help them uh, fit it in the front of the radiator a little bit better plus uh, it'll still give them good cooling this is a good uh, plate style so this is left um, got the brand new converter in it's sitting over here um, it's actually a 4.8 stall that came behind the 4.8 so to give them about another 200 rpms over the factory ls1 converter uh, since it's designed for kind of a smaller motor um, not as extreme as a trailblazer stall i think that might overshoot it a little bit but uh he'll be happy with it that way um, we got the band it's a brand new board warner high energy band nothing special about it um filter We've got oops, drop that one. two shift solenoids, AC Delco shift solenoids. Got a new lockup solenoid. The other one was so brittle it broke uh, from the heat. So might as well throw that one in. Um, let's see, what's this? Uh, Corvette servo. 
uh, if you're buying it from whatever it takes, it's a part number A as an a as an apple, 74905, B as in Benjamin, K as in Kenny. And that's it. Brand new, shiny, beautiful. And what else we got left? Oh, here we go. Here's the pump goodies. So all new pump veins, pump, uh, a lot of people call it the snowflake, it's the vein ring. Um, the steel pump rings. We got a brand new pump slide and pump rotor. So we'll do all of that later too. <coughs> and uh, what else we got left here? Getting down near the end here. You got the Transgo. This is the hardened separator plate. Um, this will guard against the, some of the check balls slamming in the plate and getting stuck in the plate or even blowing through to the other side. Um, that was a that's still a very real problem for these things. Um, you know, when you get a little bit higher exhaust pressure, when your actuator feed pressure gets higher on the exhaust side, it, they'll they'll hammer the plate a little bit. So uh, this will kind of help guard against that a little bit and uh, not give that uh, check ball a chance to wear into the plate. And then, of course, the Transgo kit. We'll get this thing going. That's all there is. That's all I've got in my box right there, ready to go. Um, so I'll, I'll be live later on here tonight. You guys can check in with me. Like I say, we'll address the all the valve body stuff, the servo, the band, the pump, and uh, and then of course the solenoids, you know, with the valve body. So that's really all for now. We, we got a lot done today. We stacked the whole case. We stacked the input drum, reverse input drum, put the low and reverses in in the case, put the low and reverse piston in, center support, both the sprag, the, the low roller clutch, everything's in there except the band in, inside the case. So we, we got a lot done here, especially with me talking as much as I do. I usually don't even talk. I usually just sing with the radio, which uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll be glad that I'm not doing that. But uh, so, uh, Oh, we got to do accumulator pistons too. These are the steel accumulator pistons to replace the plastic ones. This one actually, this unit did have a split plastic accumulator piston, split one-two piston in it. Um, it was split around the where the pin goes in, uh, in the housing, goes through the uh, accumulator piston. So that's uh, just another aspect that we got to go through to correct all the inherent issues, you know. And, uh, and get everything straight, but we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it one little bit at a time. So that's all for now. Um, like I said, just kinda keep an eye out. I should be live later on tonight. Uh, and uh, we'll get the rest of this cleaned up.